To be a Hazara is to be in constant mourning because the loss of one Hazara is the loss of all Hazaras. To be a Hazara is to be born with a death warrant warning because your life is insignificant like the babies who were murdered in their mother's wombs in the modernity wards of Dashti Barchi. To be a Hazara is to suffer in silence as you watch nine-year-old Shukriya Tabassum have her throat slit with a metal wire. To be a Hazara is to work in the March coal mines of Balochistan where your killer confirms, are you Hazara before they shoot you to death? To be a Hazara is to know that the attack on Kaj Education Center will not be the last. To be a Hazara is to bury an empty coffin because you could not locate the body in the sea of blood. To be a Hazara is to carry the pain of your ancestors because it haunts you as shackles grounding your feet. To be a Hazara is to be forcefully driven away from your ancestral homeland in, to the inhabitable mountains and to the dark caves. To be a Hazara is to be born in exile and to die in exile far away from your ancestral home. But to be a Hazara is to strive for greatness. To be a Hazara is to be Faiz Muhammad Khatib, who veiled the atrocities of the Pashtun state so that the history of Hazaras survives for the future generations. To be a Hazara is to be Sima Samar, building communities from the ground up and advocating for education and women's rights. To be a Hazara is to be Rohullah Nekpoi, the only and two times Olympic bronze medalists of Afghanistan. To be a Hazara is to be Shamsia Ali Zada. A coal miner's daughter who conquered Concord, Afghanistan's National University entrance exam. To be a Hazara is to offer so much to the world and your people, but instead your blood decorates the walls and streets of your country. And finally, to be a Hazara is to be the driving force for change in a land that is cemented in prejudice and injustice. Now repeat after me.